Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we designed current sources using a single transistor discrete and two supplies. In this design problem, we are asked to design a current source, in this case a 1 milliamp current source, using a single discrete VGT transistor and a single voltage supply. So if you recall what we did previously, was with two sources. So if we had, for instance, a VCC of 10 volts, we could set a base emitter of around 1 volt, set another source, but it required another source of 1.7 volts, that created the drop of 0.7 volts to make sure that we have a base emitter a junction forward bias. And with the emitter at 1 volt, we could select the emitter resistor at 1K, 1 volt over 1K gave us the 1 milliamp that we needed, and the collector current is very close to the emitter current, so we got the design working. We simulated and we saw that it worked. We got a stiff 1 milliamp voltage source all the way to 8.5K, at which point the collector voltage, you have a drop of 8.5 volts, and uh, the transistor is no longer in the active region. So if we wanted to use a single supply, we still need to bias the transistor, but we could use a voltage divider, right, to, to do that. So let's look at a skeleton of the circuit. So we have here our VCC, and this is where we are going to place our load, connected to the collector, We have our emitter resistor to ground. Before we wanted to have the voltage here set to whatever we want, around 1.7 volts, if we wanted an emitter voltage at 1 volt. What we can do if we have a single supply is to use a voltage divider here. And this is a biasing network, sometimes known as a four resistor biasing network, if you have also a collector resistor, so I'm going to call this R1 and R2. But this is not exactly a voltage divider because we have some base current, okay? And so this is only a voltage divider if the current going to the base is much, much lower than the current through R2. So let's go ahead and do a design with this network and then do some simulations. So our step one is still going to set V approximately equal to one volt. Remember why? We want the V to be sufficiently low not to limit the compliance. When we did it as another example before, where we set it at five volts, so 5.7 volts at the base, voltage drop of 0 0.7, five volts at the meter, in that case, you just set an emitter resistor at 5K, so 5 volts over 5K, it still gives you the 1 milli at the emitter, which is the 1 milli approximately that you're going to have at the collector. But the issue is that now, you instead of having that compliance all the way to 8.5K for a 10 volts, you reduce it to less than 5K. So with that, we set the emitter at one volt and, which, and, and select RE for the desired current. So in this case, if this is one volt, RE is going to be one volt over, we want a one milliamp. So we still get a one kilo. This is our design. Here, this is 1K. Now, for this to work, now we need to step two design the bias network. To set 
the base at the emitter plus 0 0.7. So that means to around 1.7 volts. Effectively, we are creating a source, right? We want our base to be at 1.7 volts. And so for this to work, effectively, what we need to do is that we are selecting R1 and R2. And we have, if we want to do this as a voltage divider, then the impedance looking back from the base, back to R1 and R2, or R1 and R2, need to be much lower. I mean, the impedance looking from the base back to R1 and R2 is R1 with its connected sources and R2 in parallel, right? So R1 and R2 in parallel needs to be less than the impedance looking into the base, which is approximately equal to beta times Re, right? By less, a stiff source is by 100, a factor less, right? And since beta are around 100, a good rule of thumb is that the smaller of the two, of these two, in this case, if most of the voltage drop is going to be across R1, the equivalent resistor of two resistors in parallel is smaller than the smallest of the two, when they are very different. So in this case, I went to, a good rule of thumb is that R2 should be set approximately equal to Re. And it will meet this requirement. So in this case, okay, R2 equals to one kilo ohm. Let's see if that will work, right? And um, again, remember why that's the case. The parallel combination of these two is going to be smaller than R2. And beta, although I'm trying to do the signs that is independent of beta, I'm going to assume it's around 100. And so in that case, R2 is 100 times beta times Re, if I set it up equal to Re. So this should be sufficiently stiff. And so now this is a voltage divider, right? So the voltage at the base is equal to R2, R2 plus R1 times VCC, or I want 1.7 volts, R, um, R2 is set at 1K, 1K plus R1 times 10 volts, assuming that we set this as 10 before, and we chose for R1. Okay, I'm going to, so, I'm going to do something like around 5K. So, we have here 5K and 1K. One way to think about it is that what we have done, if you do the Thevenin equivalent looking back from the base, this is equivalent to the 1.7 volts here with a small voltage drop and then still having your RE, etc. I'm not going to go over that. So with this, we have a 1.7 volts here, one volt. This is going to give us the one milli in the meter. And therefore we are going to get a one milliamp for our I load. Now, uh, we can calculate the voltage at the collector for any load resistance. It's going to be VCC minus the drop, which is IL times RL uh, as an example. If this is, let's say 5K, five kilo ohms, we will get 10 minus 1 milliamp times 5K, it will be 5 volts. Which, if the voltage in the collector is higher than the voltage at the meter by a few tenths of a volt, like 0 0.2, then all our assumptions work, meaning voltage base emitter approximately equal to 0 0.7, IC for this approximately equal to IE. Effectively, you can think that we are modeling the transistor. And they say, 
as a diode drop, if this is base emitter and collector, as a diode, base emitter and a current source. Okay. And this current source, if this is IE, this is equal to IC, approximately equal to IE, if the base emitter is forward bias, meaning greater than 0 0.6 volt. That's our collector base emitter, one model that you can think. Okay, so with this, um, let's look at the compliance. We expect the compliance is the same as our original compliance, meaning if we plot the load current, which is the collector current, IC is equal to the collector current, which is approximately equal to the emitter current. In this case, we have one milliamp, and it should go all the way to around 8.5 kilo ohms, meaning you will need to have a one point, an 8.5 voltage drop between BCC and the collector in order to drive this to saturation. So. It's effectively the same. This was the simulation that we had for the 1.7 volts at the base. Notice in this case, we do not have to have two sources, but a single one, and then we use this voltage divider. Let's analyze the circuit or let's actually, this is the one we, we, let's look at the voltages. So we have we just conducted an operating point analysis. Okay, so this one is working. Actually, let's go ahead and do this for our operating point analysis first. So our voltage, BCC is 10 volts. If we design this right, this should be approximately 1.7 volts. There we go. We have a diode drop between the base and the emitter around 0 0.7 volts. Okay. So with that, we have an emitter close to one volt uh, and uh, one volt over one K, give us the one milli. You can see here the one milli. And the collector current is close to the emitter current. And so we also get the one milli less. Delete some of these things so we can see them a little bit better. Our load is one milli there. Let me change the axis. So 
So there you go. So this is working. The voltage at the collector should be 10 volts minus 1 milli times 1k is 5 volts. No, sort of 5 volts. We see that that's quite close to what we're doing at 4.985. Let's do a load analysis. Let's vary the load and check the compliance. So I'm using the device directly with that step, param R load from 0.5k to 10k increments of 0.25k. Let's run it. And this is what we expected. So we have a stiff current source around 1 milliamp all the way to a little bit over 8.5k. Now, what you can see for this to work, recall that the current at the base needs to be much smaller than the current through R2. Okay, meaning the impedance that you are looking into the base needs to be much larger than R2. The impedance into the base is beta times Re. So you are seeing, although Re is 1k, that gets multiplied times beta approximately equals 100 in general in this calculation. So it's steep enough. Now, let's imagine that I ask you to design not a 0.5, that we want to design not a 0. Point or a 1 milliamp, but a 0. 0.5 milliamps. What can we do? Well, we can just double, right? One volt over, if we set still the emitter at one volt, if one volt over 0 0.5 will be 2K. So if we set a 2K here, we will just decrease it by half. Let's see if that works. 2K. Now what's going to happen in this case is that we are also increasing the compliance, right? Let's do it. Now, I'm going to adjust the axis, the top at one, at one milli, and the bottom at zero. So this is our uh, source, 8.5 milliamps. As you can see, it was not out of compliance throughout. And why is that? Well, now we have a 0 0.5 milliamps. And so we will need, in order to bring this to one volt, right? If we have, say, 18K or 19K, we are going to have the sufficient drop there. So let's go all the way to 20K and see it. You still have a maximum of nine volts approximately that you can provide. But you have less current, so you can have higher loads. So yeah, that's around yeah, 17.5, 4.28. Well, what happens if we in Increase it further, right? A 0.25 or so. So we set here 4K. And this will still work. In this case, higher values of R load for which it will work. Let me create instead of a 1 milliamp, a 2 milliamp. I just use a 500 ohm and that will work. 
two milliamp. Now we are decreasing the values of the load, so it will be half of those. So two milliamp all the way to around to close to five k. So let's recap. We are now able to design current sources using a discrete single transistor PJT. We are placing the load in the place of the collector resistor. And we are using the fact that if we have a base emitter junction forward bias around 0.7, the collector current is approximately equal to the emitter current. And so if we are able to set the emitter current and this MPN sync current, so if we set the emitter current say at one volt by setting up the base at 1.7 volts, then this emitter resistor controls the emitter current. In this case, one volt over a 0.5K gives us the two milli, or when we put a volt, one volt over one K, we had one milli, and that is what we get then in the load. Now you all the current sources, we have a maximum compliance, a maximum voltage, um, that you can provide to the load, and this is not a difference. Now you're going to see that the maximum or the range of load resistors for which it works is dependent, of course, of the value of the load current. Now in other videos, we're going to see how to do other sources as well as other circuits. This one is focused for discrete design. Uh, we're also going to see maybe some for integrated circuits. Thank you.